everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar featuring Dr. Hiro Matsui and Dr. Eric Hyen. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing through dynamics.org. Um, during the webinar, we'll only have the host and presenter microphones enabled. Um, so please raise your hand if you have questions or if there's something uh, wrong with your feed to let us know. Presentations in the series will be approximately 50 minutes in length with questions and answers following during the remaining time. Today's talk highlights a benchmarking exercise undertaken by CIG in conjunction with its Geodynamo Working Group, executed by Drs. Hiro Matsui and Eric Hyen, both staff members here at SIG HQ and at UC Davis. Hiro received his PhD from Tohoku University and is the lead developer for the Geodynamo code Calypso. Which says a set of codes for MH dynamo simulation in a rotating spherical shell using spherical harmonic expansion methods hosted here at SIG. He's also developing the finite element based code GeoFem MHD. Eric received his PhD from Osaka University and has a broad background in high performance computing, working on projects ranging from topics in computer science to physical systems. At CIG, he has worked on a wide range of projects, including Aspect and Virtual Quake. Today, they present the results of the benchmarking exercise initiated at the 2012 Geodynamo Developers Workshop, culminating the work presented last week at the 2014 workshop in Boulder on accuracy and performance benchmarking. So, Hiro, go ahead and um, take it away. Okay, thanks, Lorraine. So, good afternoon. My name is Hiro Matsui. So, today, I'll talk about the uh, results of the uh, accuracy and performance benchmarks for the uh, geodynamic simulations. So in the introduction, so, so we have so, uh, reproduced many basic aspects of the uh, geomagnetic field or planetary magnetic field in the uh, numerical, dynam numerical simulations for the uh, last 20 years. Mm -hmm. né? And so, to solve the uh, it's an observation for the uh, geodynamics, and so we try to represent how we try to understand how it changes and you know, why it how it behaves in a numerical modeling. You know? And to construct the uh, numerical geodynamo, so we solve the uh, conservation of the mass. Conservation of the moment equation is considering the colloid force by the Earth's rotation and buoyancy, which is the energy source of the magnetic field, and the Lorentz force. And so we also solve the energy equation and magnetic induction equations, which is derived from the Maxwell's equation, and Ohm's law, which is concerning the magnetic hydrodynamics approximation. So, in the characteristics of the flow in the outer core, is uh, strongly uh, influenced influenced on the uh, Coriolis force. Then flow so, uh, aligned with flow pattern aligned with the uh, rotation axis. As a consequence, so uh, uh, convex pattern getting elongated with the uh, rotation axis and making a uh, crown pattern. Then so we so uh, we expect the flow pattern in outer core is dominated by such a columnar flow. In the light movie, the volume rendering image of the uh, G component of vorticity. Then so the flow turn the rotates around this uh, red or blue patches. Oops, such a noisy. <laughs> And in a magnetic field, so we often consider a frozen flux approximation. 
if there's no diffusion, so the magnetic field line is uh, moving, moving with uh, uh, flow velocity. Then, so the magnetic field line in the uh, outer core is so the twisting and folding along with uh, such columnar convection in the outer core as shown in the this plot so the, the blue indicates a uh, anticyclonic flow which has a uh, negative voltage negative voltage and uh, uh, red patches indicates a uh, cyclonic uh, cyclonic flow which which uh, rotates an, around the counterclockwise. Then magnetic field line, magnetic field twisted along with uh, such vortices in the uh, outer core. And then, so we look at the dipole field uh, leaking from the core boundary, core mantle boundary uh, at the, from the outer core. That's a basic process. So uh, we expected in the uh, outer core, but so we still have a problem in the uh, parameter uh, dimensions numbers in the uh, numerical dynamo. So uh, these are one example of the sets of the dimensional num dimensionless numbers for the uh, numerical dynamo, Rayleigh number. A command number, Prandtl number, and magnetic Prandtl number, and so biggest problem is a uh, uh, viscosity and some of the diffusivity is a uh, very very small. Then Rayleigh number, which is a uh, ratio of the you know, buoyancy and diffusion, it's getting very very large, and a command number. Is which is the ratio between viscosity and Coriolis force is very very small, and magnetic Prandtl number is also very small. So it's very hard to apply these dimensional numbers directly. Here's an example of the. Uh, Numerical dynamo in the uh, upper half is a uh, G component of uh, voltage and the lower part is a uh, radial magnet field. And so the uh, ECMA number is decreasing from left to right. So then, so flow pattern and it's getting smaller and smaller with decreasing the uh, a command number and increasing with a Rayleigh number. So then we to solve a numerical dynamo with a parameter for the Archer core. So the length scale would be very small, getting very very small in outer core. Then we need very high spatial resolutions. Here's a little bit of uh, all the plots by Conrad Roberts in the 2001. So he plotted an uh, Ekman number for numerical dynamo and Rayleigh number on the vertical axis. So there's one big diamond. Here's a parameters which is used for uh, today's benchmark and then a benchmark. And now we so uh, many simulations has done around the uh, ECMA number to be 10 part minus 4, range of the 10 part minus 4, and currently uh, some part the uh, lowest ECMA number is is a uh, 10 part minus 6 or 7th order. So then still, I should parameterize 10 part minus 14, then it's still very far numerical dynamo Still, we use a very, very large command number and smaller number. So, so we to approach uh, Ash's parameter. 
we need to run simulation with very very fine uh, spatial resolution and so we need massively power computational environment then so motivation of the today's benchmark so yeah we have uh, we've got uh, successful numerical dynamos for the last 20 years and so now we can represent the uh, basic process with the geodynamo but so parameter regime is quite far from the uh, actual acid core and we need ma more higher spatial resolution and must be the power computer environment to approaching uh, these acid parameters so Question is, what method is accurate and or good sonar? So to find the uh, next generation's dynamo, so we want to uh, investigate how accurate current uh, Jordan models and how fast and how suitable for the uh, multi parallel computational environment and then so uh, we discuss on uh, what method which direction should be better to go to pushing up na pushing na down uh, equipment number and pushing up na rail number that's uh, today's uh, study so we consider uh, two Benchmarks. One is a uh, accuracy benchmark. Another is a uh, performance benchmark. And so we also think two models for them. One is a uh, one is used is the uh, insulated magnetic boundary, which is which was proposed by. Christensen at all 2001 and this model is more us like boundary condition and so we also consider another model that says a uh, should vacuum boundary which is proposed by Andy Jackson in 2013 so this model is easier to treat in a local method so we we'll, so now explain so now what is this benchmark model. So well, first one is accuracy benchmark. So in uh, this accuracy benchmark, so now we investigate which model or which method is more accurate. And so now we choose a uh, 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 dino benchmarks uh, by uh, Uli 2001 and Christensen 2001 and uh, Jackson 2013. Uh, so then test and uh, compare the uh, simulation course. In uh, this dino model, so we consider uh, bushness incompressible fluid in uh, rotating. Uh, Speaker shell that uh, modeled by uh, from the uh, ashes core. Then we normalize uh, this domain domain by the uh, thickness of the uh, outer core, and we set the uh, inner core inner core and the uh, outer core ratio to be zero point three five. So it's this parameter is also close to the uh, uh, geometry, geometry. And today we consider the uh, summary driven convection without the uh, composition conv driven convection. And we also assume all, excuse me, all diffusivities are constant and in the core is is co rotated 
this mantle. Then, so, the uh, inner quad, the uh, common boundary, rotates with the same speed. And we solve the problem in a rotating frame. Here is the governing equation. First one is the momentum equation with considering the Coriolis force and thermal buoyancy and Lorentz force. And we also solve the temperature equations and magnetic induction equation. And velocity is incompressible and uh, magnetic field is uh, diffusion free. And we choose a uh, four dimensions number. So the uh, Rayleigh number, it's a little bit different than uh, the definition from previous one, modified Rayleigh number, Prandtl number, and magnetic Prandtl number to be these parameters. Like my number to be temper to minus three, it's much, much larger than uh, acid value. And modified Rayleigh number is something like the uh, twice of the uh, critical value, which is a uh, minimum ready number uh, to drive the convection without a magnetic field. And we set large magnetic bundle number to be five. These are uh, same setup for both insulated and uh, should vacuum uh, benchmarks. And so the boundary conditions for temperature and velocities are also the same in the both model. So velocity we set the non sip boundary at the inner boundary and temperature is fixed to be one at the inner core boundary and to be zero at the quantum boundary. Then, so the convection is driven by this temperature gap between inner core boundary and quantum boundary. And so we set the initial temperature as a by this equation, and so the, which indicates on the, the temperature perturbation has a 90 degree symmetry in a longitudinal direction. So then, so the initial value drives the convex, the drives the four, the set, the four sets, then total eight set, uh, four up varying flow in a longitudinal direction. And we set two different, we consider two different boundary conditions. One is a as right condition, initiated ma magnetic boundary, which is a, uh, which considers the uh, no current density at external of the shell, and so the uh, magnetic field, current density, and electric field has to satisfy these uh, continuity Continuity at the boundary. Magnet field has to be con continued at the com boundary. And so normal then radial current also to be continuous then to be zero at the boundary. And so the tangential electric field has to be continuous ne? at the boundary. Boundary. These are boundary conditions for the oops, initiated boundary. And so we set the uh, initial dipole field and the uh, toroidal field uh, describing uh, this function, which also satisfies uh, these boundary conditions. And in a short vacuum boundary, which is a uh, which considers the uh, only magnetic radial magnetic field exists at the boundary. Then, so this boundary condition is much much easier to apply for a local method such as finite difference 
the finite element or finite vo finite volume. In uh, this under this conditions on a uh, so B theta B phi to be zero at boundary and so the uh, the radial derivatives of the uh, R square B R also to be zero to, to satisfy the uh, derivative B equals zero at the commutative boundary and so the uh, we consider a different initial magnetic field for uh, this should vacuum boundary to also to satisfy uh, this boundary con uh, should vacuum boundary at the uh, initial field so here's a uh, solution of the uh, benchmark so we measure uh, we measure the uh, results at the uh, core steady state so on, uh, on the graph. So the uh, uh, kinetic energy is a uh, red line and magnetic field line is a uh, evolution of magnetic field energy is plotting in uh, blue lines and so on. Uh, so uh, and dot should vacuum need a little bit more longer time to get a cross st steady state but so uh, it's almost constant in the t equal 20 and uh, in shape boundary so uh, we often measure uh, we measure uh, results at more than t equal 12 or later and so uh, in the bottom panel we show a uh, radio magnetic not move so uh, I shown a radial magnetic field for an uh, insulated and should vacuum boundary. So uh, both results has a uh, 90 degree symmetry solutions. And so uh, now results has an uh, opposite direction. So uh, because so, uh, both boundary, both initial magnetic field has an uh, opposite direction. So and in a Cauchy state solution still keep moving from east to west in the initiated boundary case. So the, and the solution always on a drift in a longitudinal direction. So then so that we measure we compare the solution uh, for the kinetic energy, so the integrated over the speaker shell, and magnetic energy, which has a similar distribution as a kinetic energy, and so now we also take the volume average, and oh, it only stops. And we also measure the angular frequency of the this. Uh, drift of the uh, flow and magnetic field pattern. So now uh, we measure these three parameters as uh, global parameters. And we also measure three more local field. But so as displayed in the uh, previous slide, so the uh, solution always keep moving, then we can't Pick specific point to measure them. So then, so we define the the point to be measured by using the radial velocity. First, we choose the mid depth of the shell, and choosing the equatorial plane, and so now we find the point. We need to find a point where radial velocity to be zero and increasing with longitude phi direction. And so we measure temperature, uh, zonal flow, phi component of the velocity, and V theta at this point. So then there are six uh, field 
to be measured in total and so we investigate on so, uh, how uh, how much accurate in uh, numerical dynamos né? in uh, this benchmark so totally 15 calls are participated so and so it's a very very rough categorized so there are four groups in a uh, this code five code so the uh, simple birth code ucsc sp model magic five ready is the uh, spectral harmonics expansion and chip shape expansion in the radius and so the uh, most sst and the tokyo tech code uses a spectral harmonic expansion in the horizontal and compact final difference in a radius and so the eight two thousand it has parody excess uh, spherical dynamo and calypso uses a uh, spectral harmonic expansion and find a difference in the radius and so the uh, two uh, more calls are participated based on uh, local method the streamers using the uh, finite element method on a meridional plane and so the fully transform in the longitudinal direction and the geofam uses a full fin uh, finite energy method in uh, any direction then so the we categorize uh, four groups in the uh, speaker harmonics shape shape speaker harmonics with cfdm and speaker harmonics find difference and local so in the following plot, we uh, put a color based on this grouping. First is a uh, accuracy benchmark results. Here is a relative error from the surgical state solution in the initiated boundary case. So uh, now, so the, the dot is categorized by this method, which I described in a previous slide. So we can categorize, so, so we can easily see a lower error, then that's a better accuracy. So in a, in a vertical direction. So, so shape shape expansion has a very good accuracy in a low resolution. So a, and I forgot. So horizontal axis is a uh, cubic root of the uh, degree of freedom for the uh, each square. So then, so the uh, the lower the lower left is has a more accurate model. So then, spectral shape chef expansion has a best accuracy and so the uh, final difference method uh, so the uh, has a is a next is a little bit on a larger error with a larger degree of freedom and compact final difference is just in the mid just between the uh, chef, chef and finite difference so so then, so the, the it's some sort of reasonable, reasonable plots and local method still have still need a lot more degree of freedoms, more resolutions to get an accuracy. Né? So then, so the, we'll make another plot by using a, this. 1% tolerance. So uh, we go to the, uh, we found the special resolutions uh, which satisfy one error tolerance for all six measured data. And here's the results of the, uh, the 
Kirby Cloud of Gina Degree of Freedom, Sna. For na each Dynam model. Then, so na. So we can. On this plot. So. Then lower Degree of Freedom is better. Has a. Indicates a better accuracy. And so na. So. So we can find the local method needs way large, much more large than uh, spatial resolutions to get same accuracy as a uh, as a uh, spectral spectral method. And in uh, this plot, so we set the uh, cubic root of the degree of freedom on the uh, vertical axis, then. So we lose the information about the uh, horizontal and radial direction. And so uh, there are not so big difference among the uh, spectral methods. So, uh, but if we split uh, uh, this accuracy in a radial and horizontal, so so we can find a uh, significant difference between the chip chef and find a different method. This plot is a similar plot, but I changed the vertical axis, and so it's only for the spectral method. In the vertical axis, so the, the we set the degree of degree of freedoms in the radial direction, then. So for Chebyshev, it's a truncation of the Chebyshev ex expansion, and on the number of the radial grid for the horizontal, for the finite difference and the compact finite fine difference. So we can find the fine difference method with much much more radial point than Chebyshev or compact finite difference. Ne? So then, so now we check the convergence uh, among the in the radial direction for the shape shape and find the difference and compact find the difference in the, so we choose the three models Magic Three, Parody, and Tokyo Tech. So the, because so they reported the solution with fixed the truncation horizontal. Resolution and changing with the uh, radial resolution, and so actually, so the uh, Chebyshev X Magic Three got the one percent accuracy, something like the uh, NC core truncation level to be sixteen or something like, and so the uh, compact fine difference can reach this threshold. Around uh, 32 and so the uh, fine difference probably achieve something like uh, 64. Then, so some fat final difference method needs four times more special resolution, special grid than uh, magic three. Né? So, so it also indicates an uh, expansion need less. Le uh, less uh, resolution to get same accuracy and solution also converts very much much faster using increasing radius in the uh, expansion. It's sometimes so, uh, something like the uh, order for faster order the uh, NR for faster than the uh, fine difference then. This solution indicates uh, shows the chip expansion converts very very fast with increasing the uh, radial resolution in uh, this benchmark parameter. So these are summaries, and so the spectral method needs uh, only need uh, one third of the uh, one uh, uh, degree of freedom in uh, each. Each direction 
of the, uh, that for the local methods. So spectral method is much, is much, much accurate than the uh, local method. And in a spectral method, so the change expansion needs only you know, one fourth degree of freedom of that for the uh, finally different method in uh, this benchmark. Né? And so uh, this error also converts very fast in the uh, chapter of method. But so still question, so we can't uh, investigate uh, how this convergence of the accuracy will be in a uh, larger lady number and lower command number and more higher resolution. That's still open question. And uh, now moving on, move on uh, performance benchmark. So in uh, this benchmark, so we investigate uh, which method is more suitable for the uh, massively parallel computer computer environment. And then to so we investigate uh, perfor computational performance in a uh, one same compute computational environment. So then, so the, we choose the same parameters as for the accuracy benchmark to simplify the problem. And some code has a variable time steps, but today, so now we choose a uh, use a uh, fixed time step then so on uh, uh, the decomposition so for is only done in uh, initialization process and most of the all of the codes in a uh, direct method uh, all of the code in a uh, spectral method uses a uh, direct solver, then so the, there's no iteration, then performance won't change with the time. So we we perform the simulations for 100 time steps and take the average. And so we also exclude the time for data I.O. and time for initialization in uh, this performance benchmark. Honestly, so uh, most of the calls only need uh, a few minutes for the uh, initialization in uh, this benchmark. And we always run a simulation for the uh, hours or days or weeks long then. So most of the case, we don't care about uh, how long initialization takes. So here's a platform which we tested in a performance benchmark. We use uh, the Stampede in uh, YouTube Texas Austin. And so we tested two benchmarks. One is a strong scaling and another is a weak scaling. And Stampede has a 16 processor core in uh, each node. Then, so uh, we always use uh, this all 16 cores in uh, each node. And so the uh, test with up to 40, 4096 cores, which we don't need uh, paperwork. Né? So, as I mentioned already, but the spectral method uses a uh, direct solver, then performance does not depend on uh, boundary conditions and parameters and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, timing of the uh, simulations, such as the initial the initial part or uh, cosine state. 
بعد نو کار میاد سونا جواب هم یه چیز ایتالیب سوبر and سونا today three months is that also یه چیز یه چیز ایتالیشن میاد سونا ایتالیشن with parameter or time uh, timing but today so uh, we measure the be- performance benchmark uh, from the initial feed then this excuse me this model may need the uh, extra iteration counts and so strong scaling In a uh, song scaling, so now we fix the uh, spatial resolution and run a model with a defined number of uh, processors. So then, so the uh, uh, fan, we increase the uh, number of the uh, cores, increasing the parallelization, so it up time getting shorter and shorter. Should be half, one quarter. And then, so we can estimate the capability of the parallelization. Eh? And in a weak scale, what six? In a weak scaling, so now we set the, the fixed degree of freedom for each core. Then, so the both resolution and the number of core keep increasing. Then, so in the time, she don't change if number of the calculation won't change with the resolution. So, then, so here is the results for the strong scaling. So, we try to set the large, larger resolution as possible and try to set the same resolution as possible for the each method, but not complete. Né? And here is the lapse of time for each step on the vertical axis and number of cores on the horizontal axis and category. And ideal scaling is plotted in a dotted line. So, uh, um, actually, so, uh, it's a little bit hard to figure. So, the shorter time is better, but and if if the parity is large, so the solution should be be decreasing along with uh, this dotted line. But to make more clear plot. So here's a power efficiency. Uh, power efficiency we referred with the 16 core case, so shortest number of the uh, smaller, smallest core case. And so the, if efficiency is one, it's ideal, and higher is better. But so the, and so the most of the case, Keep good scaling but start decreasing with increasing the increasing with the core. So so then we set threshold as a zero efficiency to be zero point three and then it met the, this threshold. Né? And here's the results and clear thing is uh, we make them we marked the results So number of core of where we met the uh, uh, essentially to be 0.6. So, so if we increase in our polarization level, so now 1D decomposition, 2D, de- 1D decomposition, ah! 1D decomposition with open P and Uh, two dimensional and three dimensional for local method. So, so with increasing the polarization level uh, uh, direction, so the efficiency is getting better and better in uh, any three models. And Kyle Sand ASD keeps good scaling on uh, 4096, and that we have tested uh, how much. It can keep. Né? So then, so the summary is a uh, simple so the uh, spectral model local method keep the uh, good scalability and 
spectrum method with 2D decomposition. So, uh, so really Calypso and uh, Liz code. Uh, keep a good scaling to thousand cores. And 1D plus OpenMP model can keep the uh, scaling up to uh, 5 to 12 cores. Uh. And next is a uh, weak scaling. Oops. So in the next weak scaling, we fix the uh, spatial resolution. Uh. In the, uh, uh, we, uh, we decide to, the uh, resolution with keeping, the uh, each step to be something like, the uh, one second. And, so, the uh, resolution in, uh, this set, uh, truncation and radio resolution for, the uh, uh, these parameters with defining, the uh, accuracy benchmark results, né? And, so uh, there are three exceptions, SP model, GeoFem, Swimans, use a little bit different uh, accuracy, uh, different resolutions, né? to measure this weak scaling. And so now uh, we can test so, uh, how long it will take, and so uh, and if this parallelization is acceptable. So here's a parameter parallelization limit of uh, these uh, resolutions. So the uh, results are very similar to the uh, strong scale results so, uh, with increasing the uh, direction of the parallelization. So the uh, parallelization limit getting larger and larger. And here is uh, an absolute time the original weak scaling for each plot, horizontal axis and number of the cores, and so on uh, the the time on uh, vertical axis and shorter time is better. And so if uh, the the time won't grow so much, that's also good. Then so on uh, in uh, this plot, streamers won't increase the the time with increasing the uh, Parallelization level, that's a uh, great and so on uh, uh, Ready and Calypso also on a uh, growth of the apps time is not so large and Tokyo Tech code is also but it can't reach with a uh, 4000 cores Actually, we found so on uh, We found so on uh, 1D parallelization using the uh, radial direction so on uh, Elapse time uh, needs a longer elapse time with in increasing number of the cores. So on, uh, on the other hand, so on uh, one D parallelization with transpose or two D parallelization uh, is slower at a fewer number of the core, but so on the growth of the elapse time is much much slower. So. Here's a summary of the weak scaling. So the uh, 2D or 3D model accepts uh, more than 4,096 4, cores. And OpenMP also improves the limitation of the polarization. And so the transpose axis method, which change in the polarization direction in uh, to calculate a linear part and nonlinear part. So uh, this method so, uh, gives the uh, uh, growth of the uh, elapsed time. A uh, growth uh, keeps a uh, smaller growth of the uh, elapsed time with a uh, resolution of parallelized level. Sorry, it's opposite. <laughs> it says opposite, opposite thing. Né? And lastly, we mentioned. Uh, Prediction of the minimum cores very briefly. Here's the results of the uh, ready and Spimans. So the uh, Spimans need uh, has the lowest uh, growth of the uh, calculation. And so, so the uh, uh, ready is a two dimensional parallelization. And so uh, it also has a slow growth in the speckle method and chapter expansion, which is the most accurate method. So we and it's still 
we haven't uh, adjust uh, accuracy directly between uh, this method, then, so we assume we consider the same number of the uh, zonal grid uh, for the uh, comparison between the uh, Spearman's and the uh, Rayleigh. That case, so we expect so the uh, still Spearman's need a little bit more time uh, than the Rayleigh with a uh, million core. Then, so we expect so the uh, Still, spectrum spectral method would be right way to should is a better uh, method to run a geodyna model on a millions core, but so long future it may situation may change and. Probably we don't have time, sorry. Uh, so here's a conclusion so the uh, spectral method is more accurate uh, and uh, will be efficient with a uh, million cores in the near future. Uh. And so the uh, 2D, but to use a million core, we need 2D MPI parallelization. Uh. And so the uh, OpenMP will be also uh, pushing up uh, this parallelization level. But still we have the questions on uh, we also we've already mentioned so, uh, we don't know actual accuracy in the uh, larger ready number case. And so the uh, memory limit is there in the championship expansion method, which uses a full matrix solver in a radial direction. And today we fix the uh, time step. So so we need to discuss how much benefit are there in a flexible time step because if we use a championship expansion, LU decomposition need n cubed uh, calculation and so uh, this LU decomposition need much much longer time in a higher resolution calculation. And so then, so in a workshop, we discuss about the uh, necessity of uh, more benchmarks with a uh, lower Ekman number and Rayleigh number. And so uh, uh, we need so we need a little bit more test with weak scaling test with more core so uh, to extrapolate in a million core cases. And that's it, thanks. Almost three o'clock. <laughs>
He, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, <laughs> and Glenn and Mano Freitas, who join us in their talk, Aspect from Benchmark Ninja 3D Subduction Applications. As always, more information on all events can be found on our website at geodynamics.org. I'm going to pause here, give people a chance to chime in, ask any questions. <laughs> Oops. My talk should be not so good. <laughs> Maybe I, I could I could also make sure I have everybody enabled properly. Yes. Okay. So with that, um, again, thank you, Hiro, and, and thank you, Eric, for standing by for questions here. Um, and everybody have a great weekend. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Lauren.